Home Sweet Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Ashley and I'm a homeschooling mom to one. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you what we're learning in our homeschool for the fifth six weeks. So if you notice the thumbnail, you notice that we're using the unit Inventions and Ideas from Gather Around Homeschool for this next six weeks. And we are very excited about it. Um, we have already used the artist unit from year two and we absolutely loved it. That was our first year two unit and it was amazing. We've been using Gather Around Homeschool since its beginning and we love it. We love the idea of unit studies and it's really what works for us. If you are new to Gather Around or you've never heard of it, it's a unit study approach meant to teach all of your kids from the youngest all the way through high school and all you need to add is math. So definitely check it out. If you haven't, I have a lot of videos about it here on my channel. You can also visit their um, website, which is gatheroundhomeschool.com, and you can find out more about it. One thing I want to do before we get into what we're using is I want to encourage you to go join the Gather Around Homeschool Facebook community because you're going to find so much support there and so many ideas to help you use this curriculum. And I also want you to join the app because the app also has a ton of resources and it's great for those who don't want to be on Facebook. It's a great place to go. There's a real sense of community. People are very helpful. They share lots of ideas and they can really help you plan and make the most of these units. So go do those two things. I'm going to link in the description box um, the website that you can go to to use the app in case you don't want to use the app on your phone. You can do it from a desktop and I will link that down below. I'm also going to link below the flip through of inventions and ideas. If you're curious as to what this looks like on the inside, um, you can watch my flip through and I will flip you through the teacher's guide and the upper elementary. So my son is a sixth grader. He's 12 years old, but if you look at the recommendations for how to place your child, the upper elementary is recommended through 12, but do you know what? You can actually use any level that would fit your child. You can use a mix of middle and upper. You can use whatever. Depending on where your child is, you can decide what notebook they need. I always just purchase the one student digital and I print it out at home, and upper elementary is what works for him. So that's what we're gonna use. So I'm super excited about inventions and ideas. If you're new and you've never tried it, definitely try out a year two unit. I think you would love it. So in the year two units, you're gonna see something called seat work, which is not in the year ones. And this is what it looks like in case you haven't seen the flip through. You have your spelling words, your copy work, um, your character training, all those kind of things are included on your seat work and they're one for each week. And the other thing that is going to be different is the language arts. And I'll show you what that looks like really quick, if I can find it. Here we go. So the language arts is different. You're gonna have your lesson at the top. You're gonna have day one, day two, and day three. And you need to make sure as the parent or make sure your kids notice that when you go through the lessons, it's gonna have a box that says grammar time. Don't forget to go back and do your grammar. And that's when you flip back and do the other day. So that is something new for year two. In case you were wondering about the language arts, that's what the year two looks like. I'm trying to do a better job with this unit and going forward and making sure that I'm adding language arts resources to the Facebook community and to the app. I'm really good about adding history and science, but I'm not so good at adding language arts help. Um, I just naturally go to that stuff. I was a teacher before this, and I used videos and anchor charts in my classroom all the time, so I just naturally know where to go look for stuff like that. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm putting it on the app and the Facebook page so that you can have some help with language arts as well. Now, what I'm adding is adverb and verb um, videos and games because that's what's in the upper, ele upper elementary notebook. I do not know what's in the other student notebooks. So if there's some topic in language arts that's not verbs or adverbs and you need some help looking for some resources, let me know down in the comments below and I'll definitely help you look for some and we'll add them to the group so that everybody can use them. So that's what I wanted to tell you about. Um, I love the way the language arts is structured for year two, so it's good. It's good, and that's all that we use, and it's working out very, very well. The other thing I'm excited about with this unit 
is the Bible that is offered that is inside of this. The Bible this time, the lessons that we're going to talk about are all about communication. And I feel like communication is so important. And I think it's going to be a really important lesson for my son. And it's going to be a good reminder for us adults because it talks about using our words for good. Uh, making sure that we're not tearing people down, that we're building people up. It also talks about body language and how we come across even when we're not saying anything. So I definitely think this is a great reminder for us adults because sometimes we're real quick to say things without thinking about how it's going to make someone else feel. We're also really quick to type things in the comments or to post on Facebook pages and you do not stop to think how is that going to make the receiving person feel. So I think it's a great lesson to be learned and I'm so excited to get into this with my son. Um, so the Bible in this is so, so good. So this is what we'll be using as our curriculum and I wanna show you some things that I have. I wanna show you what we're gonna be reading, what we're going to be watching, and then some resource books I'm gonna use along with it, and then one little extra thing that I bought. So to go along with Inventions and Ideas, we are going to be reading Ben and Me, so that's going to be our read aloud. I'm also going to read aloud with him who was Thomas Alva Edison and who was Nikola Tesla. We love the Who Was books. If you've been around for a while, you know that we love these. I know there are probably a ton more Who Was books that could go with this unit, but I don't want to do too many. So I usually pick just two. I spread each book over about two weeks so that we can really take our time. We're in no rush and um, we can take our time and read these books. So that's what we're reading. Now, what are we watching? Little disclaimer up front, we are pretty open to what we watch in our house. We are movie watchers, we like to go to the movies, and we love to discuss movies. It's a great way to spend time together. We're not real picky about what we watch and what we don't watch. You may be in your home and that is totally fine, you do you. But this is what we're gonna watch. If you don't think your kids should watch it, don't put it on your list. We are going to watch Back to the Future. This is actually one of my son's absolute favorite movies. This is the set that comes with one, two, and three. And my goodness, Doc Brown invents a time machine. And it's so cool and so much fun. We love these movies. So if you've got a middle schooler, high schooler, you might be okay with them watching this. We love this movie and I thought it would be perfect for inventions and ideas. If you have little kids who are like, but we want to watch Back to the Future too, and you don't want to let them watch it. We just ordered this off of Amazon. It's Back to the Future, the complete animated series. So it's animated, but there's also pieces where Doc Brown, like in human form, um, he'll be on there. And then I saw, when I walked through the living room and my son was watching it the other night, there was a clip and Bill Nye was there and they were doing a science experiment and they were learning about how the hot air balloon rises, which is perfect for inventions and ideas because we're gonna talk about inventions that fly. So just for me walking through to go to the kitchen, I noticed the science that was embedded within this. And so I asked my son because he's watched more. I said, is there a lot of science in each episode? And he's like, yes, there is. So if you don't want them to watch this one, you may could buy the animated series on Amazon and let them watch that one just for some fun. I mean. Why not? And then we're also going to watch Chitty Chitty Bang Bang because the father in this movie is an inventor. So this might be more of the speed that you're looking for. So we're going to try that out. And then I saw a recommendation from another mom. She recommended Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. I have totally forgotten about those movies. We used to watch those when my son was a little bit younger. The main character is an inventor. And what I love about him is sometimes his inventions totally flop and you know he just moves on and he tweaks them or he makes something completely different and kids need to learn that that not all the things that we come up with you know are going to be great successes and that's okay so cloudy with a chance of meatballs one and two they're both good options also so that's what we're going to watch now let me tell you about some resource books now we have these on hand all the time we also do fun schooling on Fridays usually and so I like to have a bookshelf just full of resource books I love books like that that contain all kinds of information so I pulled these books because they're going to help us with the inventions and ideas unit study the first one is the new way things work 
That way we can take an invention and he can look in this and see how does that actually work. If he doesn't want to watch it on YouTube, he could look in the book and find out how that invention works. We also have the National Geographic Kids, How Things Work, and it's a really good book too, and it contains different things. So that's why I like to have this one out also. We have the DK, How Nearly Everything Was Invented, and I like this book, and he really likes it too, because it opens up to even more goodness. So we love DK books in our house. They're just packed full of information. So we're going to use this. This book we pull out all the time. This is DK, When on Earth, and we are always referencing this book. This is absolutely amazing, and my goodness, I turned right, it's meant to be, I turned right to ancient inventions, and so what it's going to do is it's going to tell us, okay, this was happening in Europe, and then this was happening in Asia, and what inventions were coming out. This also has a page about flight, it has a page about the internet, um, modern inventions, the industrial revolution. This book is awesome. You definitely need to check this out. This is just a good book to have on hand, period. We love it. The other one that we pick up all the time is the DK Knowledge Encyclopedia, and it's pretty thick. It's a heavy book, and it's a thick book. I pull this out all the time to help with the science lessons in Gather Round. So if we're talking about friction, I'm going to pull this out and find that page. If we're talking about light, which we are in Inventions and Ideas, we're going to talk about reflection and refraction. There's a page on that. There's also a page on the history of flight. There's a page on the internet. All kinds of goodness in this book. So we use these reference books all the time. Those are not new. I didn't just buy them for this unit. But the one thing I did buy for this unit is my Crazy Inventions sketchbook. So what I want to say about purchasing things for the units, and I like to just put this out there. When you get on social media, just in general, people are doing wonderful things in their homes. They're decorating their rooms. They're buying all the things, all the kits, all the toys, all the hands-on stuff, all the puzzles all the books and so that if you're like me it starts making you feel less and it almost makes me overwhelmed and I don't know if you're with me on that but that's how I feel and I have to remind myself I'm doing what's best for my home my son is a no frills kind of kid he just wants you to sit down with him spend some time with him on the lesson he'll do whatever is asked of him he has loved every one of these units and I've never went out of my way to make them over the top or anything like that. Um, I've never purchased a puzzle. I've never done any of that. First, he would absolutely die if I bought in a puzzle. He hates puzzles. Um, occasionally, I'll buy games, um, just like little card games, but I really don't spend a lot of money and you don't have to either. Don't think because I'm showing you this that you need to run out and buy any of it. These are just things that are helpful to us and you don't have to buy it. Um, just give those people a like and keep scrolling because what works in one home doesn't necessarily work in another home. So I just want you to keep that in mind when you see all those great things. The reason why I purchased this book is my son loves to draw. Um, art has been one of his new favorite things this year. So it's combining art and inventions. And this was just from Amazon. It wasn't very expensive. And so it has like some information about submarines and then he'll design a watercraft over here. Here is hats off to you. And this says, put your thinking cap on and customize this headwear. So just a lot of different, different options. It's for me, it's to inspire him to say, oh, look at what they came up with. What can I come up with? So um, I thought this would be just a lot of fun. This is not gonna be required. It's just gonna be there on the shelf, just like our resource books are in case he wants to use it. I'm not gonna require him to use it. So that's what we're doing for this six weeks. We are so super excited to start this new unit. If you have any questions about Gather Around Homeschool, leave them in the comments below. I'll be glad to talk to you about it. I love talking about Gather Around Homeschool and homeschool in general. If there's anything you would like to see on my channel, um, I do share day in the life videos of us using Gather Around. 
I do share flip throughs, um, I share fun schooling, but if there's something specific you want to know or would like for me to make a video about, please let me know in the comments. Reach out to me and let me know and I'll be happy to do that. And also hit that subscribe button so you do not miss any of the fun things that we do here at Home Sweet Homeschool. And as always, thank you so much for watching.